Yo, Elliot, I started the program yesterday. I'm 23 years old and I have a weed addiction. Since 19, I've smoked almost every day. I legitimately tried to quit multiple times, but in the end, I always return to this habit. The longest I've ever gone without weed is seven weeks. I know the weed is holding me back in life. I'm an introvert, so I only have two good friends, and one of them is a daily smoker. It's also him who showed me the weed when we were both 18. He never tells me to smoke, but just seeing him smoke next to me is a trigger sometimes. I've smoked weed with this guy probably 100 times. We almost always smoke when we hang out. So simply meeting him is a trigger. I also see how weed has negatively affected, uh, affects him too but he doesn't want to stop because he says it helps him with his music. He's a really good friend, so I don't know what to do. Should I meet him less, or should I get stronger so I can overcome this, even if smoking weed right next, even if he's smoking weed right next to me? How should I handle this? That's interesting, man, because you remind me of my story of battling weed addiction. Yep, old Uncle E decided to start smoking weed at about age 35. I don't know why or how. I think I had just, you know, I got to a point in my life where I was like, okay, I can relax now. And I started smoking weed. And it, it was fun at first. It was nice at first. But then it had a grip on me, had a strong hold on me, right? And my situation is not very different than yours in that the pro a part of the problem was that the person that I was getting weed from was I was around him every day because he worked for me, <laughs> Right. I was buying weed from one of my employees. Right. And so <laughs> so it was like, you know, hey, buddy, bring me some tomorrow. Hey, buddy, oh, you want to smoke now? And so it was one of these things where, like, as long as I was around him, it, it, the, the temptation was there. And so among other things, right, because I've spoken about this in various other videos in various different ways and, you know, how I had my coming to Jesus moments and you know, I repented for my ways and I started to see my wickedness and my sinfulness. And it was a whole lot. It was because I think God placed that in my life to humble me. He, he made me start smoking weed and get addicted to it so I could see that, hey, I'm not in charge here. But, you know, beyond the, the spiritual awakening that I had in that moment and the choices that I made as a result, there were some decisions I had to make about my day-to-day -day life, right? So for one, one example, right, it's very practical. Don't have weed in the house, right? If you're going to smoke weed, it can't be because you got to stash. You got to flush your stash. You got to throw your stash away. I had to take everything that's associated with smoking weed. I had to put it in the garbage the day that the garbage man came, because if it was a day before the garbage man came, I'll probably take it out the garbage, right? Because you know how that is. Garbage man came, took that shit away. I was like, whew, good riddance. But my friend, you could say, right, like you, I had to get away from him. And at first I was a little mad at him, and then I was mad at myself, and then I realized I just need to be a man. And so I explained to him, I said, look, man, I'm, I'm not smoking weed anymore and I'm not getting it from you anymore and I got to go somewhere else. And that's one of the, that's one of the way, reasons I stopped going into work and started working from home more, right? I know this sounds crazy and I'm just, I'm showing you my vulnerability. I'm being vulnerable with you right now. Telling you what old Uncle E had to do when he was struggling the way you were struggling. And so I really liked him. I really liked him. We were... We, he worked for me. We were also friends. <clears throat> and we enjoyed each other's company. And when I decided that I had to stop, our relationship took a dive, right? I don't see him that much anymore. I don't talk to him much anymore. In fact, because he was working for me, I stopped talking directly to him and I worked through someone else. I was like, okay, tell him this. So I worked with somebody. I, I, went, through a, I went through a line of communication because I stopped communicating with him directly. And it was nothing personal. It was... I got to get away from anything that triggers me. And you're right. You got to get away from anything that triggers you. Anything that triggers you, man, anything that triggers that craving, you have to get away. From. Now, the craving is going to come regardless, right? Because it's in, your, it's in you right now. It's got a stronghold on you. But if you are around people or you're around things or you're, around, or you're in situations where it's going to tempt you, you got you to cut it out. And so my... my I know you say I only have, I'm an introvert and I only have two friends. Probably one of the reasons why you're an introvert and only have two friends is because you smoke weed every day, right? I'm not making fun of you, but weed makes you an introvert. I know I was an introvert. When I started smoking weed, I became real introverted. That's why I stopped making videos. A lot of people want to know, like, oh, that time you stopped making videos, Elliot, what happened? 
Part of it was I was high all the time. <laughs> hey, I ain't about to make videos. I'm an introvert. I don't want to talk to anybody. So the fact that you're an introvert and have only two good friends is probably because you smoking weed. If you stop smoking weed, you'll be extroverted again. I can't talk the way I talk right now if I'm a weed smoker, right? Because I'm very extroverted when I'm speaking to you, right? I'm, I'm laying it all out. I'm pouring it all out. I'm throwing my energy out to the world. But when I smoke weed, you know what I want to do? I want to be inside. I want to talk to nobody, right? I want to hide my face. There was a time I was wearing sunglasses all the time, right? I just wear sunglasses all the time. I don't want nobody to see me, right? And so I think your whole life is going to change. It'll be like, this is what I, I describe it as. When you finally drop that axe, because that's what a man has to do sometimes. You got to drop that axe. You drop that axe. You get all the weed out of your house. You get away from your friend. I know you love your friend, but you got to get away from your friend because your friend is dragging you down. Doesn't mean he's not a good friend, but you can't be around him anymore. And so when you can do that, right? And when you, I like to say this, just based on my experience. If you smoke weed, say you smoke weed, you said 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, four years, right? I smoked for almost five years. You smoking for four years, that means no less than four months is going to be required for you to truly overcome. You must go four months. You must go four months. And when I say go four months, I mean, that's just the start. Right. You, because if you make the mistake I made, I was like, OK, I need to go five months. I went six months. But at the end of six months, I was like, well, six months is done. And guess what I did? I went and smoked weed and I got caught again. <laughs> I was like, damn it, got me again. And I was like, it ain't going to get me again next time. And so I say four weeks for the or four months for the detox, but then keep it rolling. And the way you keep it rolling is by having something else in your life to take that place. People like to say that, you know, um, you know, alcoholics and stuff, drug addicts, when they become religious, it's because the religion becomes a new drug, right? It's like, oh, you, you know, you, you stop smoking. A lot of alcoholics, right? They stop drinking and then they become zealous Christians. Well, I say this, it's a better drug. To be a Christian is a better drug. Religion is a better drug than smoking weed and drinking alcohol. Right. So if somebody says to you or if you're of that mindset that denigrates filling your life with the Lord or something else. Right. And it usually has to be, it has to be something bigger than you. You can't fill your life with something smaller than you because then you become the caretaker of it. Something that you can respect and you can look up to. You fill your life with that. It's a, it is. It's filling the space. But you must. You have to fill that space. You got to fill that hole. There's going to be a hole. Guaranteed there's going to be a hole. And you know what happens? You know what the hole looks like? Here's a practical example of the hole. One day you're going to be sitting down after you did your work or whatever you're supposed to do for that day. And you're going to be like, I got three hours. And the minute you recognize you got free time, that's the hole. And you're going to be like, damn, I love to smoke right now. Right? I remember that. Right? Yeah. You get that hole because time is the hole. When people say that you have a hole, the way I experienced it was time. And the minute minute I had free time, it was like, okay, here it goes. And I rec started to recognize that has been my pattern for a very long time is I get my work done and then boom, I do something. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to fill that hole with something else. You're going to have to realize and you have to get your mindset so that when you, you, know, you stop doing your work or you have that space, you got to do something else. You got to do something else. One of the things you could do is go for a walk, right? The minute you stop your work and you have that, that space, you got to fill it. Religion fills it. Exercise fills it. You can find different things that could fill it, but you're going to have to fill that. So four months, bro. You got to lose your friend. Sorry, friend. You got to lose your friend for a minimum of four months. And it's good to probably never be back with him again, right? Keep a, just keep a distance with him, right? Like me and, and, and the young man I'm talking about. We, I don't, I don't dislike him. In fact, I, I miss him. <laughs> I miss him. I miss the relationship we had. Um, but I knew for the greater good, I have to keep my distance now. I gotta keep my distance, man. I can't be like all there with you because I'm gonna, I'm gonna want, I'm gonna fall into temptation. Right? You gotta, you gotta divert yourself from temptation. And then after that, or even during that time, those four months, that's my challenge to you. By the way, I'm challenging you. Four months. Uh, during those four months, you're going to have to find something to fill that space. Find something to fill that space and be consistent with it. So that's that. Hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things. 
as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. That sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.